We are discussing absorption spectrum and as uh, is not very common in our course, we start with the same kind of uh, opening slide that is the last lecture. But now perhaps you understand it a little better. Here is an absorption spectrum of benzene dissolved in cyclohexane. Now you know what is molar extinction coefficient and why the unit is centimeter inverse per molar. Now you know why the x axis is in wavelength rather than in uh, electron volt or something like that. And now you can sort of guess that this structure comes because these are fibronic transitions and uh, these different uh, heights or different values of molar extinction coefficient for different wavelength tells us that the probability of these fibronic transitions are not all the same. So, this entire spectrum is of the a uh, very well known benzenoid band that is available in all organic uh, well aromatic organic molecules. It shows up nicely if the solvent is uh, uh, non aromatic, but non polar also. Now what we are going to learn is why is it that this third band is most intense, why not the first band? when will the first band become most intense because if you remember we had shown a spectrum of some other compound earlier but the first the lowest energy band was the most intense band. That depends on the uh, relative values of the bond lengths in the ground and the excited states. Now see I have taken this figure from Wikipedia and uh, I have done a little bit of surgery. I have cut the top part and I have moved it around so please neglect this. Uh, blue vertical arrow wherever it comes, uh, I have drawn my own arrow wherever required. Now structured absorption spectra like the one that you have seen arise out of fibronic transitions V equal to 0 to V dash equal to uh, 0, 1, 2, 3 whatever. This is governed by something called Frank Condon principle. There are two uh, things to understand about Frank Condon principle. Actually Frank Condon principle started with a classical formulation. And it essentially said that the transitions are all vertical. What is the meaning of that? In this diagram y axis is energy, x axis is nuclear coordinate. Very easy to understand if you are talking about diatomic molecules, uh, it is simply internuclear separation. So when it is vertical what it means is that when there is a transition between two electronic states, there is no change in internuclear separation. So no internuclear rearrangement takes place during electronic transition. This is the classic formulation of Frank Condon principle. And the quantum formulation is that the intensity of transition is governed by Frank Condon factor which is integral of chi v dash chi v. What are these chi v dash? Well chi v chi v dash this dot is uh, uh, dot of ink please neglect it. Well these are the vibrational wave functions. Energy is a quantized vibrational quantum numbers range from 0 to uh, whatever 0, 1, 2, 3 so on and so forth. And what we are showing here is an anharmonic oscillator. This is essentially uh, the kind of potential energy surface you get for an actual diatomic molecule. So the energy gaps keep decreasing, decreasing, decreasing until here they become a continuum. And this is where if you promote the molecule from here to here then the bond is going to break. Another point to note is that there is a minimum non-zero value of energy corresponding to V equal to 0. This is called 0 point energy. For our course it is sufficient if you know this we will not go into further discussion. Coming back to wave functions. The V equal to 0 wave function is essentially a Gaussian. Higher wave functions are this Gaussian multiplied by what are called Hermite polynomials forms of which we do not need to know at this point. But this is what they look like. So for V equal to 0. Uh, there is no node. For V equal to 1 there is a node at the center. For V equal to 2 there are 2 nodes equispaced from the center. For V equal to 3 there are 1, 2, 3 nodes. The middle one is at the center and so on and so forth. As you go higher up uh, the number of nodes increases pretty much like your particle in a box problem. But these wave functions are not sine functions. And also these wave functions uh, go a little beyond uh, this potential energy surface because uh, you might remember our discussion of uh, 
how quantization arises out of boundary conditions. Boundary conditions for these wave functions is that they have to vanish at uh, internuclear separation of infinity and minus infinity. That is why it is okay if they go beyond the potential energy surface. Okay. Now, Frank Condon factor means the integral of the product of the uh, vibrational wave function from which the transition originates and the vibrational wave function of the level to which the transition goes. Okay. So, essentially it is a numerical integration we will see how it is done. So, now let us say this is the excited state uh, of the molecule the atomic molecule let us say. So, essentially uh, this kind of diagram means uh, what is what does this minimum indicate the minimum indicates equilibrium bond length. So, uh, in this situation bond length is the in the excited state is greater than that in the ground state that is what we are discussing right now. We will discuss other situations when they are equal or when the excited state bond length is smaller than the uh, ground state bond length also. But let us see what this means. So, this is the wave function of the target state. Let me just draw it here this is what it is something like this and goes up goes down something like this. So, what is this Frank Condon factor? It is basically this function multiplied by this function. This function multiplied by this function for a given value of nuclear coordinate and then you add them up. So, essentially you multiply the two plots and find the area under the curve. This is how you can find out Frank Condon factor. Another thing to remember is that all upward transitions start for nuclear coordinate equal to equilibrium bond length because for V equal to 0 that is where the maximum is. So, th this is where the maximum of psi is that is why psi psi star is maximum and uh, dx is equal everywhere. So, the maximum probability of finding this wave function is at the equilibrium bond length for uh, V equal to 0. So, all transitions start for at the center of this wave function and we have fiber. So, uh, this is where it is going to go. So, what do we see if we work out the Frank Condon factors of all other wave functions actually the Frank Condon factor will be maximum for V dash equal to 2. So, now what will the spectrum look like? Uh, I am plotting against energy. So, not wavelength energy please remember. So, let us say this is the 0 0 dash transition it will have some intensity some absorbance. The next one will actually have a little more because if you work out Frank Condon factor will be greater for 0 2 dash 0 1 dash transition for 0 2 dash it will be maximum for 0 3 dash it will fall again and it will keep decreasing. So, it is going to go through a maximum if you remember the absorption spectrum of benzene it does go through a maximum because this is what the situation is like for benzene. Of course, benzene is not a diatomic molecule it is a polyatomic molecule. So, the nuclear coordinate there is not simply an internuclear separation it is something else we do not need to get into that now. Next 0 0 dash transition there is a name for it it is called the band origin. What is the meaning of band origin? Suppose there is no vibronic structure if it is a pure electronic transition then the only transition you would see is 0 0 dash. So, that is called the band origin that is the smallest energy vibronic band that you can hope to observe. In a situation like this many times what happens is that the intensity of the band origin is so small that you do not even see it. So, finding the band origin may be a non trivial problem depending on what kind of a system we are handling. Great. Now, let us go to the situation where the bond length in excited state is equal to that in the ground state. Now, obviously the transition that will be most intense the transition that will have the largest Frank Condon factor is 0 0 dash transition please neglect this small blue arrow I have told you why that has a reason. So, Frank Condon factor will be largest for 0 0 dash transition. So, what will the spectrum be like? As you go higher up in the energy the vibronic lines become smaller and smaller and smaller in intensity. This is the situation in I think naphthacene that is the spectrum we are seen in the previous module. What happens if the bond length in the excited state is smaller than in the ground state? 
Well then again actually the same thing happens as what happens in uh, the situation where bond length is in the excited state is greater than that in the ground state. Because once again Frank Condon factor would be maximum for 0 to dash transition it would fall off both ways. So, the spectrum would go through a maximum and sometimes the bond length in the excited state may be very very uh, very much larger than that of the ground state with uh, the limit that the bond length in the excited state may be infinity which means you will not even see this minimum anywhere it will just keep decreasing 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 as you increase the nuclear coordinates we will come to that also. But before that if the bond length in excited state is much break, uh, greater than in ground state then the Frank Condon factor is going to be maximum for some very high energy vibrational level which can be in this continuum range. So, now what will happen 0 0 dash transition will have some very very small in, uh, intensity 0 1 dash will have a little more 0 2 dash will have a little more it will go, keep going like this until you reach this level after which what will happen is that uh, the molecule is fragmented. So, it can have any energy. So, suddenly after a certain level you are going to get not discrete structure anymore, but rather a continuum. So, that continuum so this uh, wavelength or energy at which the continuum uh, sets in is called the continuum limit. It can be related to many other things which we are not going to discuss today whoever is interested please read this from uh, uh, one of these textbooks. Banwell and uh, Banwell is a good textbook for this, but you are going to have this at lower energy will have structure at higher energy after a certain limit you are going to have continuum. This is the signature that the molecule is dissociating by a transition and a transition to a bound state. Photoelectron spectroscopy is something that was known when you give say x-ray or something the, en the electron is expelled. So, you basically provide ionization energy. Here we are not providing ionization energy it is a much lower energy photon than the ionization energy. Yet one can make the molecule dissociate and actually this was the question from which Frank and Condon started uh, working out their principle. So, what we learn is that even by a relatively low energy photon one can bring about dissociation of a diatomic molecule also polyatomic molecule but that is more complicated let us stick to diatomic molecules at the moment one can bring about dissociation by transition to a state that energy state that goes to minimum provided the energy takes it to a continuum that is the first important thing ok. Next uh, we can think of that other extreme we are talking about if the bond length is so large that it is close to infinity then we will never reach a minimum right then the excited state is going to look like this it will be a uh, uh, it will just fall off exponentially uh, uh, asymptotically and there will be no vibrational energy level associated with it because it is an unbound state. In this case so I hope this reminds you of the energy of antibonding orbitals for example. So, in this case what will happen is that your uh, spectrum is going to be a continuum all the way there will be no structure you are going to have a transition to a dissociative state this is called a dissociative state it does not go through a minimum. So, you can cause a uh, dissociation even without providing ionization energy and there is another very interesting phenomenon called pre dissociation. Let us say uh, our transition states are like uh, our sorry uh, energy levels are like this the bond lengths are different, but not so different that you can cause uh, dissociation unless you provide this kind much of energy. However, many times what happens is that energy levels uh, cross these potential energy surfaces cross and uh, crossing can be of two types adiabatic and diabetic that is uh, another important topic. But without getting into that let us say that this excited state that goes through a minimum crosses another excited state which is dissociated then what will happen you excite to higher energy levels uh, you are going to get lines in the spectrum excite to lower energy levels you will get lines excite to energy levels close to say 2 here then there can be a crossover from the bound energy state to a dissociative energy state and that is where you will get a continuum. So, the spectrum will be uh, something like this 
you have lines at low energy, you have lines at high energy and in the middle you have this kind of a continuum. This is a signature of pre dissociation. So, this is what we wanted to discuss about spectroscopy, but before closing I would like to uh, point out a very elegant and very important experiment that has been performed by considering this phenomena that you can bring about dissociation by excitation by UV visible light and potential energy surfaces can cross. And that example is uh, something uh, that we encounter every day in labs sodium we know flame test right why is it that we get uh, yellow flame for sodium you take an ion Na plus I minus but you get the characteristic spectrum of sodium atom that is because uh, this here uh, this uh, figure is from uh, Atkins physical chemistry book but I will show you the original work. So, Na plus plus I minus the ionic state actually goes to a minimum. Na plus I covalent state is dissociative. However, these two energy states cross and if you excite you can actually excite so you can have a situation like this. You excite uh, a regular sodium plus I minus giving the right energy you can do a transition to this dissociative sodium and iodine covalent. So, that is your neutral sodium atom by photo excitation you can make this sodium iodide dissociate. This experiment which was already known was performed by using uh, short pulse high intensity lasers. When I say high intensity short pulse I mean lasers that are on for a few femtosecond. And this is a seminal work done by Professor Ahmed Zuel and his group for which he got Nobel Prize in 1999. Here you see Zuel with his Nobel Prize. And what they did was that they excited this and we will not get into the technique, but let us just, just believe me when I say that they could work out the time evolution of the population of Na plus and time evolution of population of Na. So, Na plus is reactant, Na is product right. What would happen? The moment you trigger the reaction by a pulse of light, then over time uh, sodium gets depleted and Na plus gets formed. So, population of Na plus would increase or I minus for that matter and population of Na or I for that matter would decrease. Without going into experimental detail that is what was observed. The top curve where you see a rise that is a measure of the time evolution of population of the neutral state, the neutral NaI. The bottom one is a decay that is for the Na plus I minus situation. Note the x axis, x axis is time and time is in picosecond and femtosecond. If you look at this curve it gets saturated in about 2 or 3 picosecond. So, if you fit this curve you get a time constant of some 200 femtosecond or so. So, the reason why this was a Nobel Prize winning work was that this was this is the first experiment that determined how much time does it take to break a bond and the answer was something like 200 femtosecond or so. Not only that this experiment was what Zuel called a snapshot of the bond breaking does not just tell us how much time it takes it tells us how it happens. So, actually I would prefer a video uh, recording of bond breaking. So you see uh, we said that this tells us how the population grows of the uh, covalent form it does not grow smoothly does it there are oscillations in the signal and these oscillations are much more prominent for Na plus I minus. What are these oscillations? See it goes down that means there is a decay then it forms again to some extent. Then it goes down forms again to some extent and then gradually it goes away. It is like a damped oscillation. What is happening here? What is happening is you have Na plus and I minus there together give the laser pulse they start breaking do not break completely come back. Start breaking this time they go a little further come back start breaking 
and after the 3 or 4 oscillations they dissociate completely. So, this is how a bond breaks and uh, so what we are saying is that not only can you say whether it is an n pi star transition, not only can you determine the concentration of the solute, not only can you uh, say fingerprint a molecule using electronic spectroscopy, but you can also by using advanced uh, laser spectroscopic technique try to get an intricate idea about dynamics. And this becomes even more so when we look at not only just absorption, but also we start worrying about what happens after absorption. By light absorption we have created a molecule in its excited state, then what happens? Does the molecule just come down? While coming down how does it emit the excess energy in the form of heat or light? Can it do some reaction in the excited state that it cannot do in the ground state? This, these are the questions that we will touch upon very briefly in the next module.